This is one of those things I've been wanting to make for ages. I've been slowly collecting these brushes over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. Every time I went to iMats, I would let myself get two new brushes, and this is now the final collection I've got. And I had an idea for a brush case, but I really wanted my mum to make it because she makes these beautiful crafted leather things. She's made leather phone cases, she's made custom leather book covers, and the kind of thing I'm asking her to make is so basic compared to what she normally makes. You should see some of the embossed stuff that she's made, it's just stunning. But I really wanted something which my mum had made for sentimental reasons, and also because she was going to be able to make something a lot better than I could. So what I did first is I made a rough template, and I'd laid out exactly where each and every single brush is going to go, going from the thickest and the chunkiest brush all the way down to the skinniest. And I was going to make a template available for this on Etsy or on Contribute, but in the end I decided not to just because it's so simple, I'm only really going to have to talk you through it. And then if you want to recreate this, you can do it very simply on your own. It's essentially just a rectangle with little strips cut down the middle and then a strap going through the whole thing. That's all it really is. You just need to figure out where your brushes are going to go. So lay them out on a piece of paper, ideally graph paper. Graph paper is going to make this a lot easier for you to do figure out where you want each of your brushes to go, draw a line down the side where you're going to have a cut either in the leather or whatever kind of material you want to use. I'm using leather, but you could use cotton, you could use hemp, which would be a very good alternative because hemp is very, very tough. And especially if you wax it, it's going to be even stronger and will have that kind of sturdiness that you need for it to hold everything and not just flop around like cotton can do. Once we've cut down those marking lines down the centre of the brush case, my mum's just going to go over it, and this is with a small little craft knife pen. You don't have to use any craft knife in particular, just something sharp enough to cut through the cardboard so you have a guide for where you want to cut the final brush case roll. Now if this had been made on something like cotton or hemp or just a fabric then we wouldn't have needed to cut out this thick cardboard marker but because we are using leather you're going to need to clip it in place the last thing you want to do is for that to move around and you're going to have to use some tougher tools like a chisel rather than just say a pair of scissors or a crafting knife so bear in mind that if you want to do this on fabric you do not need to do this step you can just use the paper guide and then cut out that outline onto the fabric that you want to use for your brush case once we knew what kind of leather we wanted, we put the template down on top of it and then cut it out. I always call this thing my mum's pizza cutter roll, but I have no idea what it's actually called, but it looks like a pizza cutter to me, so that's what I call it. And the leather that I wanted was something that was very, very thick. If you wanted to do this with leather, you could use pleather, you could use something that was thinner. I just wanted something that felt incredibly industrial and tough and it's never going to break on me. And then you need to pin that down. The last thing you want to do when you're cutting holes in leather is for it to move around and mess everything up. And then we used a chisel just to make sure that we got those lines evenly marked out and it was the simplest way to do it. So everything's just pinned down. Then you just take the chisel, smash it through. There were a few places where it did need to have a little quick go over it with a craft knife. It did cut through, but not perfectly. So you just needed to go quickly over with a craft knife but overall this part was very, very quick. And this is what I mean about the whole thing being really quite simple. It's a rectangle with little slits cut into it. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. And when it comes to things like the strap which goes through it, we cut out a strap to go through, but you could use an old belt. You can even use a ribbon, which is something that only occurred to me when we were later on figuring out how long we were gonna to need to cut that strap. So we took a piece of ribbon and we just wound it through to get an idea of how long that strap had to be. But if you wanted to, you could use a ribbon. Imagine how nice this would look with a black ribbon or a really beautiful dark forest green ribbon. You can use whatever you like. So just, if you want to recreate this, take the idea and then just run with it. Once that ribbon was wound through, I put all my brushes in just to see how they would sit. I was surprised at how well they were held in. It turns out that when the leather's that thick, whatever gets woven through really holds it in place. And then while I was doing this, my mum showed me this really cool little tool she made called a burr tool. And my mum has a lathe and tends to make a lot of things like this. And you take that, you wet the edge of the leather, and then you run that little groove over the edge of the leather. And what it does is it rounds it out and polishes it. And this was something that we were thinking of doing, but in the end I decided not to, and we just ended up staining the edge of the brush case. I was quite impressed actually how well that ribbon worked out, but another thing I wanted to point out is if you have a really nice belt, you could also 
use that as well. You could use a ribbon, you could use an old belt. I have some really nice old leather belts which are getting a little bit too destroyed to use as belts but they would have looked really nice on this because they're embossed. So there's loads of little different things that you could do. You could even plate out a very flat braid that goes through the whole thing and you could use something which is a completely different material. Let's say you used cotton cord or maybe you used silk. That would be a beautiful contrast. So just other things to maybe think of if this is the kind of thing you want to do. We used a thin leather. We didn't want to use a leather which was as thick. For starters, it would have been a nightmare weaving through. And I wanted something which was a lot more flexible so that it could really hold those brushes into place. So we used something which was much, much thinner than the original piece of leather. Once it was all cut out, we just needed to clean up the edges. As it turns out, because we were pretty much guesstimating this, we didn't measure it out perfectly. We cut this to exactly the right length. It was so, so close. If it had been so much as a centimeter shorter, it would have been too short, but thankfully it worked out. We had to pull the whole thing through, and at that point my mum had to go and actually work on some of her commissions, not just my vanity project, and I wove this through the rest of the case. The first time I did it, I did it the wrong way around, and so I had to take the whole thing out and do it again, and of course at that exact moment my son was like, yep, I need a nap, so I ended up having to do a bit of multitasking, but he was asleep, so it all worked out quite well. And then once that was all pulled through, my mum ended up using her industrial machine to stitch it. If you don't have an industrial machine or you don't even have a sewing machine, don't worry about it. Just get an awl, and that's that really sharp, stabby looking tool that you saw my mum use at the very beginning to mark things out. It essentially looks like a very, very thick needle with a doorknob on the end. And you can use that to puncture a few holes through the leather. If you don't have leather, then you won't even need to use this. You can use a normal needle and just sew that strap at the very start of the brush case so that it doesn't move around. I added a popper at the very end of this so that I could just wind the strap around, clip it into place, but if you don't want to use a popper, you don't have to. What you could do is you could make that strap a little longer and then that way you just take the strap and you just wrap it around and tuck it underneath itself so it will hold itself into place. It doesn't even need to use something like a popper, so if you don't want to use one, don't worry, you don't have to. When I told you that strap was made just the right size, I wasn't kidding. Look how close it ended up being. And this wasn't us being smart, this was just, eh, what could go wrong? And somehow it ended up working out, so that was lucky. The last thing I wanted to do after this was to get my name embossed on it. Now this, unless you have the equipment, I can't really think of any way that you could DIY this at home, unless you had some fabric dye pens, that could also work. But as for the gold effect, for this you really need a heat press, and as you can see my mum's got specialised tools for this, so unfortunately I can't think of a way to suggest how you could DIY this, but I thought I would show you the process. You have this little tool, which I have no idea what it's called, you have to put in the letters, you put them in backwards, and then you have a gold foil, and you have to wait for the heat press to get up to 90 degrees, you know, 48, 20, that's not going to do it, it has to be 90 and above. And then what you do is figure out where that's going to press down, we did a tester first, the last thing we wanted to do was mess this up, you press that down really really hard, and then being a hot press, it's going to push that gold foil into the leather and then as soon as it comes up, you pull the foil off and whatever you wanted embossed is embossed. Making this whole brush case was just one thing after another of things that could have ended really badly, but they didn't. The first time that this got pressed, we completely forgot to move the strap out of the way, so when that little guide went down, the bars on each side which hold the letters got pressed down onto the strap as well. So when we lifted the hot press, there was a little line of gold on the strap as well, and it was a complete accident. My mum was a bit gutted, but I was actually really happy because I thought it looked really, really cool. We did my name in two parts, Claire on one side and Delise on the other, just to make it look nice and symmetrical. And then when we went to press the last part of my name, we did exactly the same mistake again, but just on the other side of the strap. And my mum was really irritated because she was sure she wasn't gonna do it, but um, yeah, she did it again, and I was quite happy about that because it looked really, really nice. And look, you can see it go down, the name gets pressed into the gold foil, you press down as hard as you can on the lever, and then boom, you have the name. And then there is how the gold foil ended up being pressed on the outside, and I love it. I think it looks really, really nice. It was a mistake, but it's a mistake that worked out well. 
After that there were a few last touches, we wanted to stain the edge black. I had been considering burring the edges but in the end I decided I wasn't going to do that and I'm a bit obsessed with black so any chance to paint a room black or paint anything that I own black, I'm going to do it. So that's what we ended up doing and just staining the edge black. After that all my mum wanted to do was melt down the threads at the start of the strap. Because this was made with polyester you couldn't use cotton and leather because leather is so tough especially when you're using leather of this thickness. The friction when you're pulling the threads through will just make it snap so you have to use polyester. And to make sure that it doesn't snag and come loose you want to melt the very end so that's all we had to do after that. And then that was it, my homemade made by my mum brush case. If you want to see a Viking Gods themed series or even a Brother Grimm themed series, you can watch my videos ad free one to two weeks early and get all my digital creations for free on Contribi. I've set it up so that there's just one support level and then as soon as you're a contributor you get complete access to all my currently unlisted videos, those are always going to be ad free for you. And once I've reached the level of contributions needed to create a new album, new music videos, books, themed art series or anything like that, I'll be able to create all of these projects and give you the extra bonuses as soon as things like the final design of the Viking Gods or the Brother Grimm is finished, then I'll be sending a hand-signed deck of cards with those designs that I will send to each and every single person who's helped me reach that contribution level. So if you're a contributor, it doesn't matter if you joined when I only had 10 contributors or if I have 2,000 contributors. If you are a contributor, you will automatically be included in absolutely everything. There are no tiers, it's just contributors get everything. So if you want to know more about what projects I have planned and you want to help me reach those, you can find a thorough list on Contribute and I hope to see you there soon.